So whether if we console peasants want to admit it or not, Doom Eternal to its core is a PC game. Granted, its software did do some amazing things by making sure this game is capable of reaching 60 frames per second on console, which is a big deal. And obviously that doesn't come at graphical fidelity. There's no major lags, no stuttering, no issues that make Doom Eternal unplayable on the console whatsoever. But graphics and frame rate are only small parts to a bigger picture. You got to take into consideration the movement and the combat. The combat by itself shows how limited players on the console really are. On PC, you can just bind any gun to a specific key, hit the key, and you'll swap to that gun within a matter of half a second. On console, we don't have that luxury. We're kind of the little handicap brothers of the gaming community. Whether if you want to face that fact or not, it's ultimately the truth. The closest we can get to cycling between all these different guns is one hit of a button on Doom Eternal, and that'll allow you to cycle between two different guns, and if you want to replace one of those two weapons, you gotta pull up this weapon wheel, which for some isn't that big of a deal, but for others, it can be enough to take you out of that immersion, to take you out of that combat loop. And if you're like me in the middle trying to create your own hyperactive game mode where you're constantly on the move trying to get as much of a speed boost in every possible way and throw in some crazy weapon combinations, then pulling up that weapon wheel is a little bit of an inconvenience. Well, luckily for us, id Software did implement the ability to customize your button layout, which today I'm going to be talking about my personal layout and how it's been working for me. I would also love to hear what your guys' layouts are and how that works for you. I also want to point out that if you're playing with a scuff or I know on the PlayStation 4 there's a new attachment that you just plug into the bottom of the controller and then on the back side, you have like two additional button options, which stuff like that's gonna help you out tremendously. It's gonna help you with again those accessibility options, but then for some people, it can also be a comfortable option by just having those extra paddles or that little extra attachment on the back of your controller. But I don't play with any of that, I just play with the basic PlayStation 4 controller. Anyways, this is my button layout right here. It looks kind of funky or weird at first glance, but I come from the Call of Duty community, or at least I used to play a lot of COD, and that scene's gotten very competitive. A lot of times, you're gonna be coming up against someone who as a scuff controller they use those paddles to jump or drop shot so to compensate for that i've started using l2 as my jump and that is carried over into doom eternal so l2 to jump l1 handles my weapon mods you know the meat hook sticky bombs shields for the chain gun stuff like that r1 is to shoot r2 and down the d-pad will save for last We'll talk about that a little bit more in depth afterwards. But I do left on the D-pad for my equipment launcher if I want to swag between cryos and frags. Up to change the mod that I have on my weapon. Right to pull up the crucible. Square for my chainsaw. X for my equipment launcher. Circles my dash and triangles my flame vouch. Everything just feels comfortable right there. Now, normally or initially, I had R2 to swap out my weapons and to pull out the weapon wheel. The reason why I changed that is, well, for one, it was very comfortable being like that. I loved it. I just had to change it because in these fast moments, I felt like R2 wasn't responsive enough. There were times where I'd pull out my weapon wheel and I would cycle through all the weapons so quick that the game wouldn't register what I was doing and it wouldn't pull out the next gun for me. Or sometimes I would actually have to double tap R2 to pull out my next gun. And it just felt like it wasn't optimized properly for that button. So I switched it on down on the D-pad and it's gotten a little better. Still a little bit of a learning curve since I actually did it yesterday. I'm hoping by today or tomorrow I should have it down pat. But I like it because it's so much more optimized. The way I play now is my middle finger stays on my L2, my jump button. Because if you notice in my gameplay, I do that a lot. And then my index finger primarily stays on my weapon mods on L1. The only time I ever swap out my thumb for my index finger on the D-pad is in certain situations. Like let's say I'm planning on dash in a certain way or right after chainsawing a demon, I feel like I'm gonna have to pull out a different gun. So in situations like that, what I'll do is I'll bring my index finger down from L1 to tap down the D-pad. That way it doesn't break up the fluidity of my movement, it doesn't break up my weapon combinations, and it's one cohesive killing machine. For the most part, this layout has been the most comfortable for me both with weapon combinations, movement, it has helped me tremendously in Ultra Nightmare Mode, which I'm working on doing another run. If you guys didn't see, I completed the entire campaign from start to finish without chainsawing a single demon and killing the Icon of Sin with just the Crucible. Links to those two videos are down in the description and right here on your screen in case you guys are curious and haven't seen it. Highly recommend it. Anyways, that's gonna do it for me here today. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. What are your button layouts and how do they work for you? You know, maybe someone is struggling with their layout, you know, Feel free to help them out down below. If you guys are new to the channel, feel free to subscribe as I try to put out as much Doom Eternal content or pretty much any FPS game right now has been kind of my forte. But that'll do it for me here today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Y'all stay safe out there and I'll see you next time.